I'm back. Hi everyone. Yes. Hello. Hello. I'm sorry. I I think I have lost all your messages. Um. Hi Stephanie. <laughs> okay. You you know what? Uh, you the the. Uh, the breakup of this uh, live show is not a bad thing because it means I actually don't need to edit my videos later. <laughs> Alright, hi In. Oh, hello In. Hello, hello. I know you joined me last week. I'm so happy to see you. Okay, I think we shall carry on. Uh, I know the rest of people will just, will just join us accordingly. Um... <laughs> Okay, uh, so my fourth question is, uh, caffeine is bad for your health. Uh, no, we need to have caffeine. Uh, I, I don't know whether you have heard me just now. So I was, try I was trying to say that I have, um, okay, each of us can actually uh, have up to 500 mg of caffeine every day. So that includes your chocolates, coffee, um, tea, and Coca-Cola, right? So, um, I'm going to give you a breakdown of the, the amount of tea, caffeine that uh, you might uh, usually drink. So, caffeine is not bad for health, that's for sure. In fact, it makes us feel good, uh, more relaxed, you know, actually. It's more, more perk up uh, at times, yeah. Um, so, what happened is that uh, in black tea, which is your usual English Earl Grey, uh, breakfast tea, um, the usual Lipton tea, that kind of stuff. So you get to have 40 to 70 mg of um, caffeine inside. All right. And if you are having uh, green tea, that is approximately 35 to 45 mg. White tea is actually the least because it's been processed um, the most. Uh, in, in other words, it's the most natural. So that is when the caffeine level is only 15 to 30. Compared to a cup of coffee that you usually have, uh, that will go up to 200 mg. So now you know your caffeine intake. You can have a better idea of uh, how you want to control your, amount of, uh, your number of cups of caffeine every day. Okay. So number five, uh, fifth question, is this suitable for pregnant ladies? Is tea, uh, or rather caffeine, suitable for pregnant ladies? I, I get a lot of this question um, from my customers all the time, especially for those uh, who are looking for gifts to, to give away to their pregnant friends. Um, basically, it's okay to drink caffeine. Um, of course, the, the ladies uh, usually have this thing of, oh, okay, maybe my first three months, I try my best not to touch caffeine, which I did. I, because having a first kid, usually we are a bit more bang tang, right? Yeah. So, um, but in actual fact, after that third month, I got a bit more relaxed. So, I took caffeine. Every day, one cup of coffee. <laughs> Yeah, because we're Singaporeans, we cannot do without caffeine, right? Okay, so um, yes, uh, pregnant ladies can take caffeine. It is really a personal choice. If they don't mind caffeine, you could actually get a um a gift, a, a tea gift for your friend. Um, best not to exceed more than two cups of uh caffeinated drink every day. Yeah, uh, but before you get a gift for a pregnant friend, do ask whether uh. She has a particular preference. Yeah. Okay, so... Oh, I, anyway, I know... Hi, Jasmine. I know there are some people who just joined us. Hello, Strawberry5522. Hello. Uh, yes, uh, I think I may have missed out some of your questions during our live uh, session before the, the, before the breakup. Uh, the, the, the break off. Uh, can you just type me a, mes a message if you have a question? So I see that. Oh, what flavor would you recommend for a blooming tea beginner? Uh, Stephanie has not tried my blooming tea, right? Uh, we actually have got um, 12 types altogether at this moment. 
So different season, we have new flavors. Um, so if you are talking about the more funky ones, um, the not so traditional tea flavors, there are flavors like what I, I'm having right now. We have vanilla. Um, that's a bit more, a, a bit strong tasting. I also observe that our Asian, or I would say our local customers are not so much of a big fan of vanilla. Uh, maybe we prefer chocolate. Um, our local customers tend to enjoy fruity ones like peach, mango, lychee. Lychee is like the all-time favorite. Um, a more traditional tea drinker will go for flavors like a non-flavored one. So if you were to take a look at our website, you can take a look at... Uh, you, you can you can consider um Antoinette's love, you can consider Tuscan Sun. Yeah. Okay, let me know if you have more questions. I so let me carry on with my FAQs. There are some fun ones, so uh, please hang around more so you can uh yeah, okay, the next fun question. Here. How do you pronounce your brand? Okay, our brand is spelled as P-E with that stroke, T-A-L-E. Okay, so um, most people prefer, most people actually, most people actually pronounce as Pitel because if you pronounce in a more English manner, it's like Pitel, right? Uh, or um, if you do without the E behind, some people pronounce as Petal T. Yeah, well, I guess Nothing is really wrong because it's just a different way of pronunciation. Um, we were inspired by a French movie. So this is a French-inspired local brand. So we actually use the French spelling. Uh, so the, the E with that stroke, right? So we read it as Pitali. So it's Pitali T. Yeah. But most of us pronounce as Pitel. Sometimes I'm also pronouncing it as Pitel because I'm so used to it. Right, okay. It's like Espinade or Espinade. So, yeah, both are, both are correct at pronunciation. Yeah. I... Okay, number seven. Okay, question number seven. The names of your tea are so fun. Where do you get your inspiration? So, um, on a personal note, right, I, I love palace stories. Uh, I, I I like to read um stories that speak about uh how all the women and the wives fight with each other <laughs> in the palace, whether it's Chinese palace, Korean palace, or European palace, they are the same. Uh, yeah, yeah, I can even show you evidence. Yeah, you see, these are some of my um latest books. Yeah, I it has turned a bit yellow. But because I'm a very particular reader, I always make sure that I have no doggy mark on my books. Yeah, I want to show you guys because I want to tell my audience how the names of this uh, Blooming Tea have been inspired. Um, so we actually have names like this. We have names like Cortison Secret. Well, you can see where the inspiration comes from, right? Uh, Antoinette's Love, uh, Antoinette's Affair, Mm, Tuscan Sun, we have Romeo Loves Juliet, we have My Fair Lady. So this was the first range of um, our tea that was launched, which which was uh, really quite some time ago. That was when we first started the brand. And it's pretty cool because I wanted to have this tea to be a bit more um, feminine. I mean, blooming tea is quite feminine, to be, to be frank. Of course, we have... Uh, male customers who are uh, great fans as well. Um, so, yeah, that, so that was the reason why we came up with this very fanciful names. All right, and then thereafter, uh, we came up with simpler names because we realized that people cannot remember all these names, you know, <laughs> including ourselves. Uh, so after that, we came up with, uh, and the flavored one. So we use uh, the, the fruit to, to name the tea, like Mango Boulevard, Pamela's Peaches, uh, vanilla fuse, apple of his eye. So it's pretty obvious what the flavors stand for. Uh, except for the Antunis affair, okay, this is this is um pretty lame. So one day there was a customer who asked me, "Hey, can you tell me 
Why do you have an Antoinette's love and then you have an Antoinette's affair? Both Antoinette, what are the differences? So, okay, technically, the differences is that one is lychee flavor, one is the original flavor that there's not fruity at all. So, I, the, the story is like, um, not story, but it's, it's actually, it was actually a fact. So, Antoinette's affair, which was, which is this, okay? They actually look the same as the Antoinette's love, right? Um, so when we make the tea, uh, it was quite difficult to do one particular design. And because we were really short of time, we had a European fair launch uh, to, to, to catch up for. Um, so, okay, we, and we couldn't think of another, another design at the moment. And because time was tight. So... We just thought, okay, if that's the case, why don't we repeat this particular design? And you realize that uh, on our menu, we don't have repeated designs. We only have this Antoinette's uh, design that are the same. So Antoinette's to love, Antoinette's affair. So as I explained to uh, that particular customer during one of the pop-up store, so I was telling her that, so you see, the original was called Antoinette's love. And since it's the same design, we call this a, Antoinette's affair. Love usually comes before affair, right? Okay, I know it's quite lame, but I think that kind of makes sense too, right? Okay, I knew people joining. Hi! Oh, is that, is that Wilna? Oh, hi, Wilna. Mm, Sunshine Lim. Alright, the, the computer is actually a bit far, so I need to strain my eyes a bit. Hi, hi, hi. Hi, everyone. Hi, hi, Genesis. Oh yes, it's creative. Yes, thank you. You didn't know that, right? Uh, yeah. Hi, Genesis. And yes, Genesis says is is very cool and uh, knowledge and reaching. Thank you very much. Okay, I think uh, hey guys, if you have any question, please let me know. Right. Okay. So next question. Okay. Next question. Huh. Um, the eighth question. Okay, green tea helps you to slim down. Hey, look at me. You know it's not true, right? <laughs> okay. Um, jokes aside. Green tea actually have a lot of uh, health benefits. Um, uh, anti aging. Uh, anti cancerous. Uh, helping you to relax. Uh protecting you from UV rays and a lot more actually. Yeah, um, and one of the health benefits happen to include um, burning calories. So we, we know many ladies always try to drink a lot of green tea while they are trying to be uh, slimmer and uh, to be on a diet. Okay, uh, while saying that it is true that green tea helps to burn calories and you know as you drink a lot of tea for the whole day you probably feel quite Food already and then that will reduce the amount of food that you eat so I think that has got to do with that that, has, that, that is one factor as well yeah so to say that green tea really make you lose weight is probably an overstatement yeah because if it's true I think I would be much slimmer by now <laughs> drink green tea every day or rather I drink my own own blooming tea every day which is made of green tea okay uh, number nine okay uh, do you need to cut the string away from the blooming tea. So, I had customers who come to me. They say that, hey, um, just want to check with you. Do we need to cut away the, the string? Uh, because after I cut away the string of the blooming tea, it looks funny. So, see, I'm just going to show you guys this. For those who have attended our last Friday's live, uh, you saw the dissection process, right? So if you look, okay, can you see this string here? Okay, there's actually a little string here. I think this one is not very obvious. Some of these are a bit more obvious, some of these are not. It depends on the way it's been made. Um, and they are handmade, so each ball is different. So you can see a little string here at the side. Maybe it's not so clear, but um, if you have purchased our blooming tea before, check it out. 
you could see some um some bits of string at the side. So and because the string was actually tied this way, um so what some customers did was they actually cut away the string. Um no please don't do that because the flowers are meant to be attached to the tea and they are attached with one or two string. So if you cut away the string then there's no more blooming tea. It will bloom but it's going to be scattered everywhere. Good. Okay. Um the last question how can you uh sorry uh what can you use to add into this tea mm, other than sugar and honey yeah sugar and honey are really common um one of my favorite way of drinking tea uh not um not the blooming teas because the blooming teas are actually a bit light um one of the ways that i would like to encourage you guys to try is a bit out of the norm uh, for locals, I think. Um, when you drink black tea, such as uh, Earl Grey or the usual English black tea, try adding fruit compote. So fruit compote is like a um, like a more uh, natural and uh, more fruity, more, more real fruits inside. It's, it's like a better version of jam. Uh, if you don't have a fruit compote at home, you can use strawberry jam you can use any flavored jam that you personally enjoy add into the black tea you get a flavored black tea so that's actually another way of enjoying um your teas other than adding sugar or honey of course the traditional tea drinker don't add anything else so it's really up to your personal preference um some uh some customers um they actually ask for this uh, honey uh, honey stick. So you just use the honey stick and then just stir the cup of tea that you have. Uh, and then if the, if the honey is still, uh, is still, there's still left over of the honey, then you can just keep it in the fridge. So that's, that's another way, yeah. So, yes, that's right. So uh, let me know if you have questions. And because I can't see from here, I'm going to see from my phone, which is recommended by, by a friend of mine after looking at my video. Okay, I think it's not working. <laughs> Let me see. If you have any questions, please type in your questions. Let me know and I can help you with that. I hope everyone enjoy your uh, session with me. Yes, yeah, so if next Friday you are joining us again, please prepare a nice cup of tea. Uh, be entertained. <laughs> I'll, try, I'll try to come up with uh, different content for everyone. Is there any question? Let me see. Uh. Okay, looks like we have no question from the floor. Um, which flavors are more suitable for men? Um, well, then again, it really depends on what kind of men you have there. <laughs> I, I know of this, this friend. Um, he doesn't drink flavored tea. He drinks only Darjeeling. And... Any more interesting tea? The most interesting tea he drinks is um, Earl Grey. <laughs> so it depends on what kind of friend you have there. Uh, I would say that uh, for a starter, um, you can always get an assorted flavor. Uh, we actually have this assorted pack um, in, on our list uh, if you visit our website. Uh, check it out. There is this assorted pack um, that comes with six different types. So we usually will put in half classic for the more traditional tea drinkers and half the fruity ones uh, for the more funky people. Yeah. So yes. So I would recommend you to go for the assorted one. Good. Okay. Uh, no other questions. Right. Um, for those who are looking at this video, um, 
Well, we actually had this 20% uh, discount, 20% uh, store wide going on. If any one of you have seen this video, uh, yes, uh, check it out. If This is one of the best time to order because it's, um, well, thanks and no thanks to COVID-19, we are providing free delivery. And at the same time, if you have seen this video uh, and you're ordering within the next 24 hours, we are giving a free honey lollipop. So that was something that I was referring to last week. Um, there you go. So this is actually the honey lollipop that we have collaborated with a stay home mom. So yeah, we would like to support um, women uh, in, in that way. So this is, this is one of our first uh, pet project um, that we are working on. So yes. Um, these are for sale too, so you can check it out. Check out on the website. Yeah, can children drink the tea? Um, kids can drink tea only if you allow them to. If you're a parent, so they say that young kids, like I don't know, um, under one year old, shouldn't be drinking coffee or tea uh, or anything caffeinated. So I came to that rule. Um, and honey also, by the way, yeah, and honey. Kids under one year shouldn't have any honey at all. Um, so I, I, I actually try to keep uh, that to my, uh, for my kid too. So it's only recently, he's like two and a half years old, that's when he started to drink a sip of tea because he was looking at, oh, mommy's blooming tea, mommy's blooming tea, that's so, that's so nice, can I have a sip? So we always tell him, okay, you're a kid, you can only have a sip, yes. Okay, I hope I've answered your question, Pauline. Thank you, everyone. And I hope to see you again. Thank you, thank you. Have fun for the next week. Bye-bye.